right, so Peter wants to learn how to make pizza. So I'm just gonna go over a couple of things that are top of mind, um, but this wasn't pre-thought out. So one of the key things about making pizza is how you're gonna cook it. So oven, right? You can do it outside. Uh, high temperature is good. So whatever your oven gets up to, mine will go to 550, so I'll heat it up to 550, but before you heat it up, you gotta look and set, see how your rack's set up. Um, you're gonna wanna use a pizza stone. There's a pizza stone, nice and dirty is just fine. Then you're going to want your rack to be on the bottom of the oven. You might think, hey, um, hot air rises, so it's hotter at the top. It's not, it's hotter on the bottom. Um, once you get your oven up to 550, then you need another hour at 550 to get the stone up to 550. Um, your pizza is, is going, otherwise you'll have um, like blackened cheese with no flavor and you're gonna have uh, undercooked dough. So you want this basically as hot as you can get it and that stone takes a long time to cook. Um, if you make multiple pizzas, one thing to do is keep in mind uh, spacing them out because if you put the cold pizza on there, you're gonna drop that temperature of that stone quite a bit. Um, the ones I make take about uh, nine minutes to be totally cooked. Um, if you're making your own dough, you might have like some sourdough starter over here um, for your for your dough mix. But um, I think the best way to start is with that uh, French bread recipe that I'll show you. And so don't start with the dough because it's going to be a complication. Just get it uh, either you start with the French bread, and you don't need to worry about the pizza dough. It's going to be very straightforward. I think it's like a 375 cook for 12 minutes or something like that. And it'll come out fantastic. Use a slightly older, um, cheap French bread uh, um, that you get from the grocery store for like $1.50. It'll be older, it'll be a little a little uh, harder. You don't want it really soft and fresh. Um, you wanna wait like a few days till it's kind of on the borderline of stale. But what you can do, um, so as you move forward from cooking a pizza in the box is Focus on, you can work on the sauce a little bit. And don't you don't have to make the sauce from scratch. I can teach you how to do that. But what you would do is just get a, um, a pasta sauce that you like. Um, a recommended one is Rouse. Rouse. Rouse is really good. It's like 11 bucks for a, um, you know, I think 16 or 18 ounce jar. So it's kind of on the pricey end, um, but it, do, it does have a lot of flavor to it. What you'll then do is um, you can use that just um, as it is. But um, I kind of wouldn't. What I would do is I would get a saucepan out, um, you know, saucepan on the grill, uh, on the griddle, the burner, and add in um, about maybe two or three tablespoons of um, extra virgin olive oil, um, two, an equal amount of butter. You sort of get that up to temp, and then you're going to put in maybe... Um, maybe like a few minced uh, garlic cloves. So what you'll do is you'll take, you know, you'll grab one clove, you will smash it with the, the butt end of your knife, uh, mince it up. Once you smash it, you'll peel, uh, you can cut this little, uh, before you smash it, you can cut this little um, bitter end off, then you take the peel off, and that and a few, um, uh, maybe like a teaspoon to your, kind of to your liking of red pepper. Once that, um, butter, olive oil, garlic, a red pepper, um, possibly some salt. I wouldn't really use salt or sugar at this point. Uh, get up to temp, a little bit of, you get aromatics in there, then pour your rouse sauce in there, mix that up, get it, uh, get it warmed, maybe until you see a bubble or two, and sort of, uh, sort of mix it. Now you've got your pizza sauce. So at that point, you will need to think about how you're going to get your pizza into the oven. Um, and that's a, that's a trick. That's part of the process in itself. So what you'll probably want to do is you want to get your dough rolled out. You'll need to be on a floured surface of some sort. Um, so you can use, you know, some regular flour. Um, I also keep the semolina flour. From there, you will want also most likely some parchment paper. Um, and so you can, once you get your dough rolled out, Actually, uh, for the for the regular pizza, you don't need the parchment paper, but you do need the uh, pizza peel. So you'll have your dough rolled out, you'll have your pizza peel, you will put um, flour on your uh, peel itself, and um, the semolina, maybe a little bit of uh, 
uh, whole wheat flour, and then you'll get your pizza there. And now uh, your clock your clock is ticking because as that um, that flour acts as a barrier between the moisture of the dough and um, this surface on the pizza peel, depending on whether you use a metal one or a wood one. And um, in a little bit of time, it'll get sticky. But for the moment, it's not sticky as long as that flour stays dry. So what you do now is you have your dough on there. You're going to quick, you're going to take your uh, pizza sauce, you're going to spoon it on, you're going to uh, rub it with the back of the spoon, and then you're going to take your toppings. Um, and so, you know, whatever you like, but I'd suggest just getting some, a package of, sorry, my arm's getting a little sore. I'd suggest just getting a package of um, pepperoni and then whatever sort of cheese you like. You can get um, regular uh, shredded mozzarella cheese is fine, but um, if you wanna be a little more, um, you know, traditional, you can get the, the fresh mozzarella. Um, you can sort of, it's in, it's in a shredded mozzarella container, but that fresh moist mozzarella, you'll cut that into discs and you put it on there. So then you sort of work it quickly. You might need to give, um, <laughs> give like a jiggle 